Hello guys and welcome to this uh, grease pencil again and animation tutorial. This is the first tutorial on uh, 2024. It was a request by Fun. He said I hope you will explain how to dismember a character after building bones or add an effect such as blood or scratches. I guess there is no such tutorial relating to grease pencil of course. It may be a weird tutorial to start the year with but maybe it is fitting with what's happening in the world. Anyway we have this file, we have an arm, we have a hand with with a knife in a different grease pencil object. I will put a starting file for free on Gumroad and if you want the final file with the animations you can buy it for a small fee to support the free content on this channel. So let's start. First we start by selecting our armature, the arm armature and go into edit mode. So here we have some parenting. This bone is parented to this bone and this one is parented to this one. It is a bone chain and what I want to do first is to unparent this bone. So we do alt p and we choose clear parent. We will see later why we are doing this. So we do control tab, we go to pose mode now and with this bone selected we go here under bone constraints and add a child of constraint. So with this constraint we will parent this bone again to this bone. We click on the eyedropper here, we select our armature, you see the title here, arm rig, left click and then here we select our bone that is the forearm and now our hand bone, if we rotate this one now, it's parented again to this guy here. We will see later why we changed from a regular parenting to this constraint. Now let's select our grease pencil object from here. I have lock object mods disabled. I should be able to go directly from pose mode to selecting this grease pencil object but it's not working for some reason. Maybe it's a bug, I don't know. So I will select it from here and then we go to edit mode, tab. Maybe I will hide my rake and then I want to add a cut in the arm. First let's go to frame 14 and this is where I want to cut the arm. We will select two points from here, so one point, shift select the other points and then two points from here too, shift select again and shift select again. Let's do right click and do subdivide but before we do that I want to duplicate this frame here. So with the cursor here I do I and I do duplicate active keyframe, not active layer but duplicate active keyframe for all layers. So we left click on this and now we have a duplicate of these frames here and now I can right click and do subdivide and let's open this menu here and change the number to 2. Yes, nice. And now I can select these two points, shift select and then X and we do delete points or we can just do X. P and now we have a cut here and here and if you go to frame 13 you see that we still have the whole arm here and here we have this cut. Now we want to connect these points here and these points here. Here we have two separate lines so we'll select one point from each and do control J to join these two lines here. So in this case here the distance here is bigger than this distance. If I change this point for example let's move it with G and put it closer to this point. First I select a point from this line. So control J. You see that it joined it here because the distance here was smaller. So if you have that issue you should do something like select a point from here and then do E and extrude it and make the distance smaller on the side you want the joining to happen on and then you can select the other stroke and do control J and it should work. Let's select one point from here and one point from here and I want to add more subdivisions here. So right click subdivide and open this menu and I guess this is enough. Now for this part here, this is just one stroke and not two strokes so we don't do a join in but a fill in so we just hit F and we filled this part here. This glitch here is because of weight painting I think. So I will select my uh, rig again, let's unhide our armature. Let's go here under the armature properties and change here from pause position to rest position and now we don't have that glitch anymore. Let's hide the armature again, let's select our left hand again. I want this part here now to be on the hand layer and not on the arm layer and we will do the same for the weight painting too. We select this shape, put the cursor over it, we do L and then we do Control C and then we do XD to delete the shape from here and then we select the other layer either from here or if you have grease pencil tools add-on enabled you do Y and you go here you select the hand layer now it is the active layer and we do control V to pass our shape and yes now we have the arm on the arm layer and we have the hands let's disable onion skinning from here 
And then let's go to sculpt modes and I want to sculpt these shapes a little bit. I don't need stroke select here, so I'll disable it and select the layer I want to play with. Let's start with the arm. And of course I have auto lock layers enabled. So select the arm layer while of course the push tool is selected. Shift to click here, shift again, click here. Let's try again. Let's sculpt more. Maybe increase the brush size like this. We can smooth again with shift left click. You can add more vertices if you wish or more points, more subdivisions. Let's go to the other layer, Y with the hand layer and do the same here, shift click to smooth these corners and like this. Now I want to go to draw mode and to add some blood to the edges here. I have in my materials this blood material here. We have a stroke and we have some keyframing to make it look like a rainbow, an animated material. And I want to use this material for the blood. So again to frame 14, let's select this ink pen rough brush. Let's disable the pen in here and choose our blood material and then pin it again. Here we have vertex colors. Let's choose material colors so that our animated rainbow can work. And now we are on the arm layer here and we can draw some blood some colorful blood here now that this ink pen rough brush doesn't work the same when we are zoomed in and zoomed out let's zoom out a little bit and we draw our blood here now change layer to the hands and we draw blood in this part too very nice so if i hide my arm i get this if i hide my hand i get this now we go to weight paint mode, control tab and we choose weight paint. Let's go to the object data properties to our vertex scrubs. So the arms should be fine either on frame 13 or 14. We go to the forearm. Now we don't want this cut part here to be weight painted with the forearm anymore, but with the hand. We enable the subtract effect to subtract weights instead of adding it. And we can switch between minus and plus using the D shortcut. So now with the hand layer selected, we can paint or end paint the weights from this part here. And now we go to the arm layer and since we added blood here, you see that it's not weight painted yet. So we change again to add the weights D and we paint this part. And let's go to frame 13. Yes, everything is fine here. Then we select the hand vertex scrub. In our hand layer, we paint this part again. And now this part is connected effectively to the hand. Now we can unhide our rig and we can go again to our armature properties and we change here from rest position to pause position. And we don't have that glitch anymore. And if I move this bone, I will move everything with it. So let's put it here and maybe rotate it just a tiny bit. Now I have some actions with animations that I did before. We don't want this tutorial to be too long. So let's select the knife from here and then change here from grease pencil to action editor and choose an action. We have knife cut arm and we have knife cut neck. So we choose this one and then we select our armature and we choose another action arm hand fly. Let's try to play these animations. So we have the knife that goes and cuts the arm and then the hand bone goes and falls and you see the problem that we have with parenting that even if the hand is far from the arm it is still animated when the arm is animated but with our child of constraints we can disable the parenting whenever we want so let's go to frame 13 and here we add a keyframe on influence here the value is one and then we go to frame 14 and we change the influence to zero, which means that the hand is no longer connected to the forearm bone. So here it's one, here it's zero. And now if we play again, you see that the hand fell and the arm is still moving and the hand is not moving anymore with the arm. But if you go here and you animate the arm, the hand will be animated with it. This of course works only for animations in pose mode. If you are in object mode and you move your armature, the hand of course will move with the armature. If you have to move your character in object mode, you should find another method to make the hand stick to the ground. And that is, I guess, just by hiding the hand, replacing it by another hand in different grease pencil object and create the illusion that it is of course the same hand. Now it is time to draw some blood on the knife. The first contact of the knife with the arm is here. Let's hide the rig again. So let's select the knife object. Let's go to draw mode. Let's do Y and select this layer, the bleed layer. 
and I will draw some blood here. Let's switch again here to grease pencil and we have our ink pen rough, our blood material and let's draw some blood on the tip of the knife. I will zoom out a little bit. First I want to duplicate this frame because we will need this blood on the tip for the rest of the animation but we will add elements to each frame. So I select this one, let's do shift D to duplicate it and to repeat this action I will do shift R and shift R again, shift R again. On this first frame I will add a line of blood here. The same line I want to make it just fall just a little bit and maybe be a little bit smaller, maybe here. And then here, turn it to small splashes. Maybe go to sculpt mode and use the thickness brush control to make it negative and make this one a little bit smaller. And we have this animation. Maybe here make it smaller with the push tool, make it a little bit shorter. Let's disable overlays. And now it is time to create a bloodstream using particles. So let's hide everything, all these collections and do shift A, add the mesh, a UV sphere. Let's enable overlays again. Let's go to the particles properties. Let's hit the plus button to create a new particle system. If you go now to the modifiers panel, you see that we have a new modifier, it's called particle system back here and we have our particle settings here if you do play you see that we have these balls falling from our sphere so we go first under render and we change from hollow to collection and under collection we choose our blood particles collection so if i hide my sphere and unhide my blood particles collection see that i have some drops of blood here they are made with that same brush so this one and this one and this one each in a separate grease pencil object of course let's hide this collection again so again to my sphere again under render i choose my blood particles collection and here you see my particles, they are too small. We have scale here, I can increase the scale. And now we have another problem. The particles are facing sideways. So what I do here is to go up and the rotation. There are a lot of settings and sometimes they seem random and you will have to go up and down and find the settings that you need. So you enable rotation and here in our rotation axis, you change this to global Y so that the particles face the Y axis, that is the axis facing the camera. So if I play again now, you see that the orientation of the particles was fixed. I don't know what happens if I change randomize here and the rotation not that good because they want only rotate on the y-axis but i don't know it seems like a cool effect here maybe we lower the randomization a little bit and we have this then we will go again to the source and change from faces to volume so that the particles are more constrained to the center of the sphere are not outside the edges of the sphere now under render so again render here you can choose to hide the emitter in your renders and if you want to hide it here in the viewport you go under viewport display and you uncheck show emitter so i don't want the blood to splatter like this i want it to be more constrained here in the center so again up under velocity we change normal to zero and now you see it is more going in the center not going sideways Let's go up again and we change frame start to 14 because that's where the cut will happen and that's where we want the bloodstream to start. Also you see that the particles are automatically going down because we have, if you go here under scene, we have gravity enabled. So let's enable our arm collection and let's select our sphere again and i will go to frame 14 maybe i want to parent this sphere to our forearm bone so to do that with the sphere selected we go to object properties and the relations and here in parent we click on the eyedropper we choose our armature and then under parent type we choose bone and here we choose our forearm bone and now the sphere is parented to the forearm bone so let's select it again and i want to resize it with s i want to move it here to resize it on the X axis, so SX and resize it like this. Let's do three to go sideways. And now S and Y to resize it on the Y axis. Maybe I will hide my rig again. 
Let's rotate it like this. Let's resize it again. S Y and resize like this again. One or zero on the numpad and S X resize again. And then G move it here. Let's do three on the numpad. I don't want it to be on the center of my arm because sometimes even if the sphere is hidden, it will hide some parts of the grease pencil object. So I'll move it a little bit in front of the arm, maybe here. And then zero to camera view again. And we try to animate and see what happens. It's already looking good. But now I want the stream to go a little bit on this side. So again, with the sphere selected, let's name it, let's change its name. Blood arm, enter. Again to the particle system. The particle settings, I want also to rename them. Blood arm, enter. And we go under velocity and we have this object aligned. X, Y, and Z. So I guess we need the X and we change these values to either make it go this side or this side. So minus, yes, let's disable overlays and see how it looks. So here I think we're random looks better than jittered. Let's disable overlays again. Go under render. I think 09 looks good. Maybe change the scale randomness to give more randomness to our particles. We go under emission and we change the end. So frame start was 14 and the end, since we have 60 frames here, let's try to change this to 60. And now to the particle numbers. So this is the total number of particles and they will be spread on all these frames here between 14 and 60. If you have more like 1000 frames, you see now that we have much less particles on each frame. If you change this to 60, we will have more particles on every frame. And you see that the playback is already slow. So to optimize, we change this maybe to 400. And for the lifetime, you see that the particles will come from here and we go down and down until they finish 50 frames and then they will disappear. So that's a lot of frames. We only need blood in the camera frame. So we change this maybe to 20, maybe to 25. So if the particle system is slow and your computer maybe can't keep up and you want to optimize the two values that will lessen the load on your computer are the number of particles and the lifetime of each particle. I think I will disable random order and then maybe increase the size of the sphere. Now let's go again to frame 14, enable overlays again and duplicate our sphere here. Then we change the parent and here and their object properties from forearm to hand for this new sphere, of course. Let's move it again here. Now it is parented to the hand bone. Rotate it just a little bit. Let's rename this new sphere to blood hand. Enter. And let's try to animate. We don't need that much particles. So we go under uh, the particle settings. We make this guy unique so that we create new particle settings and we change here to blood hand. We decrease the number to maybe 100. Try to animate. Maybe also change the velocity from zero to five. Let's change again to 200. I think I will increase the size of the particles maybe. Zebel overlays. I will unhide the knife also. Now we duplicate again. So maybe this one. Enable overlays again. Uh, yes, this is it. Let's duplicate it again. Shift D. Let's do Alt S to change back to its original size and then resize it again. And I want to parent it to our knife. So with it selected, we do Shift left click on the knife. Because of lock object mods, it is in sculpt mode. So we change back to object mode from here, left click, and we do control P to parents and set parent to just object. Now we select our sphere here, G and move it to the tip of the knife. If we play now, we have this strange animation. So let's go to the particle settings again, and let's hit this number again to create new settings and name them blood knife. And this time we need only five drips. We change the velocity again to zero. And let's try to play again. You see that the particles are going this way because of this object alignment. So we change this back to zero. And now we have this, yes. We just need to change the ball placement. So G, move it here. Decrease the size of the particles, maybe 0 0.5 or 0 0.6. 
Now we have this. So now, in addition to the drawings that we added manually to the knife, we have this drop that comes here and goes down and then more drops when the knife is up. And yeah, we should also select our blood hand sphere, go to settings and change here, yes, the X to zero. I think five in normal here is too much. Maybe I change it to one only. So I guess this is it. This is the rough of it. And once you create one of these particle systems, you can duplicate it and change the settings slightly and have different effects. In the second example, the man example, let's hide our arm collection and, and hide our man collection here. Let's also change the animation of the knife here under action editor. We change to knife cut neck. Oh, let's hide these particle systems and keep only the man particle systems. So here you see that the blood doesn't go down, but it goes like in a fountain. Let's select, yes, here the man. And we have these two spheres parented to the man rig, one to the body and one to the head. So here, if you select this one and go in the particles, you see that we have a normal of five here. And this is what creates this fountain. If I change it to zero, the blood will just go down like this. I should also put these spheres where they belong in their collections. Blood arm goes in the arm collection. Blood hand goes also in the arm collection. And this one is for the knife. So I name it blood knife and move it in the knife collection. And now we can see it here parented to the knife and hide the arm. And the other two collections are also parented to the arm rig. Very nice, let's hide it again. And we have this animation. And you see also that the same frame per frame animation, the blood animation that we created for the knife, works just fine on the neck. So this animation can be also reused. And look, it works really fine. It starts from here and then goes here. And then here, here. You see these three drops that we created too. And this is a particle that is going and falling. And then blood starts dripping from the knife. So this is it guys. The final file with both animations, the head animation, the arm animation is available on Gumroad for a small fee. And if you want the starting file to use it to follow along with this tutorial, it is free also on my Gumroad. Thank you for watching this video. See you in another one and peace.